Hello everybody, how are we all doing today? My name is Dachi, welcome to the channel, and let's get right into this video. So today's video is going to be all about our lovable Australian Junkrat. Now Junkrat is a character that is extremely powerful in the right hands, and also you can choke spam as much as you want with him, and you can get a lot of value out of him. Junkrat is also one of the characters that has some pretty insane mobility, being able to take the high ground whenever he feels like it. And also, with his traps, he can actually delete people all the way across the map, even though he's not even there. Now, Junkrat's main weapon is called the Frag Launcher. Now, this is the weapon that you know and love when it comes to spamming chokes and being able to do a lot of damage. It does 120 damage per hit if it's a direct hit. If it's not a direct hit and it's splash damage, the damage is 10 to 80. One of the best things about Junkrat's grenade launcher is that you can actually shoot people that are around the corners, meaning you can actually get kills from people you don't even see. This is extremely handy, especially when they're in tight corridors or small spaces in general, because Junkrat is king in small rooms. Junkrat also has a very high kill potential with his concussion mine. Now if you would land a hit on an enemy and you can immediately follow up with a concussion mine, that means that you have an instant kill on a 200 HP target. Now this concussion mine deals around about 120 damage to 30 damage as they drop off. And has an explosion radius of around about 3 meters. Now this concussion mine isn't only used for damage, it's also used for mobility for Junkrat. Now Junkrat can actually carry two of these in his pocket, but he can also actually pop down one and actually wait for the cooldown to happen, so you technically have three mines at the same time. This can be extremely handy for when you're trying to jump into a fight or trying to retreat because you'll have at least two mines back in your pockets if you need to even escape even further. Or deal some extra damage. Now we get the Junkrat Steel Trap. Now this is probably one of the best abilities in the game I reckon because in a game where everyone is really highly mobile, this stops them completely, meaning they're free kill. It's also one of the abilities where you don't have to worry about it too much when it's actually down. Because unless it gets destroyed, you will most likely get value out of it. And even if it does get destroyed, most of the time when people are destroying it, that's a perfect opportunity for you to quickly get into their face with your bombs and just blow them up. Not to mention, if it's actually been out for a while already, you can already place down a new trap. Meaning that they might have destroyed one, but you can literally place down another one immediately. Now, I always reckon that your trap should be active 24-7, so as soon as you go into the game and the game's about to start, I recommend placing a trap sort of in the way so you might be able to get a quick pick at the start. Now, just make sure that you also put one of your concussion mines right next to it so you can delete any 200 HP targets. Any target that has actually over 220 health is not able to be killed immediately. But it still gives you some really good ult charts, so it's worth no matter what. I probably should also mention that the person is actually trapped for three whole seconds. There's a lot of Sombra mains out there at the moment, and the trap is actually a really good counter against Sombras. If you manage to find their translocator, you can basically pop a trap right on top of it with a mine, and as soon as they teleport back, they either get killed by the trap, or they get blown up by the mine immediately as well. Another quick thing to actually mention about the mines and also the trap is that the new skin for Overwatch 2 is actually technically kind of a nerf. Because you see that trap a lot easier than you see the old trap. So if you got some old skins available, use the old Overwatch 1 skins instead of the Overwatch 2 skin. One thing we quickly need to talk about is certain characters have abilities that they can still use while they're trapped. For example, Genji has his deflect, which means that he can deflect any incoming damage that you try to do to him. Meaning that Genji can actually get a nice free kill. But that's not necessarily true, because Junkrat has quite a bit of splash damage, that means that you don't actually have to fully aim at him with your concussion mines. Sometimes though, even with your concussion mines, you don't instantly kill the Genji. But instead of throwing another concussion mine, I would actually recommend just punching him as soon as he stops deflecting. Another annoying character to actually deal with is Mei. Now, Mei can basically freeze herself, meaning that she doesn't receive any damage, even when she's in your trap. And she can also make sure that she stays in the ice long enough so the trap actually expires and she will not be trapped anymore. Something I would recommend with Mei is when she actually pops her ice is go and put a trap right in front of her, go behind her then, and then immediately fire. This will boop her straight into the trap. She might also put up an ice wall, but if she does put up an ice wall, remember you have concussion mines to quickly jump that ice wall and get a kill on her. There is one character that can just get out of the trap no matter what which is Orisa. Now, Orisa can basically just go straight into the trap and then pop her fortify. Now, what this does, it will basically break the trap instantly and she can just move around like nothing ever happens. If you guys are liking the content, by the way, why not subscribe? It would really help out and also maybe share it around. 
Another thing, by the way, is that I also cover the lore of Junkrat and Roadhog in one of the other videos that I actually uploaded, so go check that out, and well, hopefully you guys like that too. Ah, right, let's keep going with the video. Now, Junkrat also has two passives. Now, he has the Total Mayhem passive, which is his specifically, and then there's also the Damage Category passive, which is every Damage Hero's passive. Now, the passive that you get from being a damage hero is basically increased movement speed and increased reload speed whenever you get an elimination. This will last for 2.5 seconds and then it will stop. Unless you get another kill, which it will reset to 2.5 seconds. It will not stack. Now, Jarkrat's specific passive is Total Mayhem. Now, Total Mayhem is something you don't really need to worry about too much because it basically happens when you die. Now, what this basically does, it unleashes a whole bunch of grenades when you die, dealing 200 damage to the surrounding area. Honestly, unless you know you're about to die, because there's no other option, it, it's not something you really need to worry about. I mean, sometimes I do actually, like, jump straight into, like, the enemy when I know I'm about to die, and hopefully maybe I'll get a pick. But apart from that, I reckon don't worry about it too much. This is not something you need to, like, focus on. Now let's get into Junkrat's ultimate. Now Junkrat's ultimate is a bit tricky to actually use because it has health and if you use it wrong you can get absolutely no value out of it meaning that you have to get your ultimate again. And not only that you can actually use it in such a way that you're actually hindering your team more than anything. Now there are a few ways to actually use Junkrat's ultimate but in my opinion it's one of the best zoning tools in the game only because of the noise it makes. Now, as soon as you hear fire in the hole from the Junkrat, most people will back the hell up because they know a tire is about to pop up out of nowhere. Meaning that most people do not want to fully engage because they know there's a tire somewhere and they want to kill it before they actually properly engage. Now, you have a solid 10 seconds before your tire actually expires and blows up by itself. Which means that you actually have the entire 10 seconds to keep your tire at bay and wait for people to either come to you or if they do pop up on the point, you can quickly zoom down to the point and blow them up. This is especially handy for any of the objectives, meaning that like if you have only 10 seconds left for you to cap the point, pop the tire within those 10 seconds and a lot of players will actually back up, meaning that there's only a few players on the point itself and everybody else is trying to back up not supporting that one player meaning your team can actually get a pick on that guy and then you can pop your tire on the back line just don't forget that there are actually certain heroes that can one benefit from actually you popping a tire or two they can actually just completely block your tire making sure that that doesn't do any damage at all and also they can destroy your tire so if you are actually using a tire make sure you actually strafe left and right and make sure you're as hard to hit as possible stick close to walls is also a really good idea you should never give people enough time to actually hit your tire so popping straight out of a corner is amazing for killing people fast now let's talk about junk's counters now junk's counters are mainly zarya and farah now, one of these is a lot worse to deal with than the other. And surprisingly, it is actually not Farah. Farah is actually pretty easy to deal with if you know what you're doing. Now, most players will actually pick the Farah just because you are Junkrat and it's an easy counter against Junkrat most of the time. But what most Farah players don't realize is that Junkrat can actually be really effective against Farah, especially with his concussion mines. Now, the main thing with Farah is that you need to know the map a little bit and make sure you have enough cover against the Farah rockets. And also, make sure you have enough concussion mines so you can actually start being in the air with the Farah, meaning you are harder for the Farah to hit. But I think the biggest thing is, is it is a skill issue. Now, most Junkrat players are just used to spamming and not really trying to aim for anything at all. Farah, on the other hand, you kind of have to aim for. Now, the best way to actually practice against Farahs is to make a custom game and enter this code right here. In this custom game, you basically go to the practice range and you'll be able to summon a Farah at this location right here. Now, you can actually just practice against the Farah and try to 1v1 them a little bit. They won't really fire back, so it's a really nice way just to practice getting your shots on a Farah. Now, if you want to make things a little bit harder, you can also actually summon a Mercy to pocket the Farah, meaning that you won't be able to just trickle them down with small little shots here and there. And you'll need to actually do the 1-2 combo in midair. One really easy way to actually deal with the Pharmacy as Junkrat is to actually straight up just ult onto the Farah and Mercy. Mercy and Farah usually can't do too much unless Farah hits a direct rocket onto the tire. But most of the time in midair, a Farah won't be able to quickly flick like that. 
This is probably really important as well. Every single time you do kill the Farah, make sure to type in chats saying that you just killed the Farah as Junkrat, meaning that the enemy team will be like, wait, why is our Farah not dealing with the Junkrat properly? Oh my god, this Farah sucks. Which means that you will win the psychological battle and people on the enemy team will start arguing. Which means you get a free win. Now the real counter to Junkrat, in my opinion, is actually Zarya. Now Zarya is one of those characters that can make sure that she always, and I mean always, has a bubble ready so you can basically charge her and then she'll be at 100 charge, destroying your team and at the same time destroying you. The best thing with Azaria I always reckon is to literally just use your ult against her whenever you can. But just make sure that you actually use your ult against her properly when she doesn't have any bubbles. Because otherwise you're basically feeding her charge anyway. My biggest recommend when it comes to Zarya's is just not to try focus her at all and actually just go for her teammates. Zarya's are usually very selfish with their bubbles and they won't actually protect their team too much. Now I'm just going to mention this as a sort of honorable mention. Uh, so a lot of people also think that a Widowmaker can actually like completely demolish a Junkrat because well obviously the Widowmaker has range and the Junkrat doesn't and Widow can always you know like go away whenever the Junkrat gets near him. But in my opinion, I don't really agree with this because most of the Widows I actually go up against, as long as you use the terrain to your advantage properly and don't just like walk in a straight line towards them, you can actually take out Widows pretty easily. Now I made a quick little tier list about who Junkrat is good against and who Junkrat is bad against, but it will also differ per person and also, well, some players will be able to outplay you pretty easily with certain characters just because they are really good with them. For example, there's a lot of tier lists out there at the moment saying Sombra is really, really good. And yes, she is actually really, really good if you know how to play her. If you don't know how to play her, then well, she's just gonna absolutely just die constantly and not get any value whatsoever. And I also kind of feel like that's the exact same sort of thing with Junkrat. But anyway, that's the video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you guys did, maybe leave a like. And uh, don't forget to check out that uh, Junkrat and Roadhog uh, lore video I actually have. If you guys liked that as well, well, you know, I'll be making some more of those very soon. So, anyway, hopefully you guys have a good one. Bye!